I will talk to you guys a little bit about my, well, not my personal, but the horticultural societies that I am part of. If you guys watch my, or listen to my podcast, then you know that quite some time ago, I did a podcast called Not So Secret Societies. And I talked about various plant societies, horticultural societies, that sort of thing, gardening clubs, and how, what a valuable resource they can be to gardeners. So I thought I'd talk about the ones that I'm a part of, because this year I, I actually joined a bunch. So the first one is the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society, and I was part of that one last year, the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society is the group that puts on the Philadelphia Flower Show every year. They have, the memberships are getting more expensive, but I think it's just because in general, putting on the Flower Show is getting expensive. Speaking of which, this year is at FDR Park in Philly, and so it's gonna be outdoors so that, you know, to handle all the social distancing requirements. So, they have, in addition to the flower show, they do have other programs, lectures, that sort of thing. Uh, some of them are during the day. Some of them don't necessarily work if you work, which obviously I do. And and so, and they do cost extra money, but they're like $35 if you're a member, that sort of thing. So it's not too bad. So... They have a lot of programs. They're very big into trying to eliminate food poverty, particularly in the Philadelphia area, because there is a lot of uh, poverty stricken areas. And so they frequently, you know, ask people to donate excess produce. They also have a yearly um, garden contest. And so thousands of people enter in the list, like the, the ribbon list is absolutely, it's, it's really, it's outstandingly huge. So there's that. And then I also joined the Hardy Plant Society. And I found out about that because I, I you know, like peonies and I tend to get peonies from Peonies Envy. And so Kathleen was talking about, that's what she was talking about. She was talking about she was going to do a lecture for them and, and that's how I found out about it. So it's a society for, I think they cater primarily to New Jersey and Pennsylvania. It's, they don't call it hardy plants because it's like perennials or anything. Uh, There's a reason that they call it that. And, but the one thing that's nice is that they do a lot of tours. And so, you know, they have all kinds of pop-up events. Some of them are free. Some of them um, cost money. And they also have a silent auction in March, which I just participated in. If you guys were following me on Instagram, then you probably saw me talk about how I was getting two rosy winged bearded irises. That's that's how I got them. Uh, they have, I know one of the members is doing a, a peony tour at the end of May, and I've already marked the time out on my calendar because it's during the day, and I'm definitely gonna go because I love peonies and I would love to see what somebody else is doing. And then in June, beginning of June on a Saturday, they have this like massive like four hour tour with the reception and that is free to the members. So I'm definitely going to be signing up for that. So it's just, and they have all kinds of programs. They really do. They've got Scott and they also have like scholarships and they have a yearly trip to England to go tour some of the gardens over there. So uh, that's probably not going to, you know, I'm not going to be able to do it this year, but definitely next year I want to do that. And then, let's see, and then the last two are chrysanthemum societies. So I know I've mentioned elsewhere that I wanted to get into heirloom chrysanthemums, which are not the, you know, we're not talking about the things you find in Lowe's and Home Depot uh, during fall. We're talking about like the, the almost like the dahlia type uh, chrysanthemums that are for exhibition. And so I found out about these through Florette because she grows the heirloom varieties um, on her farm, you know, as cut 
flowers. And so she mentioned that she got them from King's Moms. So I went to the website, ordered a catalog, and I was prepared to order a lot. And I had made up my mind in terms of what I wanted, and it took me like three weeks. And then I went to log on to get them, and they had sold them. So they pretty much, their entire season, they sold out within the first two weeks of this year. So now I have to wait a whole nother year. Uh, so I did find something slightly similar at Bluestone Perennials. It's, it's, they don't have nearly the variety, but they, they did have some. So I ordered some from them, only six. But then, you know how people talk about, like, they think that their phones are listening to them because then they see, like, ads about stuff they were just talking about? Yeah, well, I had that experience because on Instagram... I saw an ad for the Central Carolina Chrysanthemum Society. And basically they said if you joined, you would get three, three free plants. So I did. And um, even though I live in New Jersey, there's no bar on, like, you have to be a state resident. They take people from everywhere. And then afterwards, I found out that New Jersey had one, so I joined and so the one in New Jersey they do have a, like a member sale uh, the only thing is that this year they put their order in way too late and so they got shut out so there's no there's no there's, they're not getting chrysanthemums this year so but with Carolina uh, I'm definitely getting some from them for at least three and they sent out an order form because you can order more. So I did ask the lady, like, how many of these can I order? And so what it is with the Central Carolina group is that they are very committed to making sure that heirloom chrysanthemums do not die out. And so basically they want to give chrysanthemums and teach people how to propagate chrysanthemums. And they want to get it to as many people they want it you know they want to get it to as many people anywhere as they possibly can so it seems right now it's definitely a process um i spoke to the chap the president of that the, the central carolina society and so she's there's some been some restrictions in terms of agricultural things they can send so because I have no experience growing mums, she's going to send me bare roots rather than um, rather than cuttings. And so she says she's going to look around because she, since I live in New Jersey, she wants me to make sure she's getting me stuff that's going to be hardy uh, because some of them are a little bit, maybe a little bit too tender for New Jersey. So I definitely appreciate that. So she was. Because I, I wanted to, told her I wanted to get like 10 to 15, and I think she thinks I'm crazy. And, which, yeah, I am, but like, what, how many gardeners do you know are really sane? I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, but she was telling me what I had to do, um, and after she told me everything, well, you know, how I, like, what you actually have to do with them, and how, because it's a, it's a very, it's, it's time intensive. Like, you have to start them in a small, like, a three inch um, terracotta pot and then bump them up. And so I think she was thinking, okay, once I tell her this, she's going to be like, okay, never mind, I'll take three. I'm like, ah, all right, ah, okay, no biggie. You know, like, ah. uh, so, like, yeah, no, 15's fine. <laughs> and she was, so I could tell she was a little bit taken back by it. And, I just told her, I was like, listen, I like roses, and I deal with fairy roses, I was like, and they're finicky as I'll get at. I was like, they cannot be worse than, they cannot, absolutely cannot be worse than roses, because roses, especially in this area, like, keeping those things, like, from, from, you know, losing all their leaves, and from, you know, black spot, like, it, it, that's, like, Keeping your roses fungal free is like a full time job. It really is. So um, I, I don't get the impression that heirloom roses are quite heirloom chrysanthemums are that fussy. So I just told her I was like, yeah, listen, I'll be fine. I was like, just you know, give me instructions. Um, they will be sending me a binder, and I'm like, just give me instructions. Like I, I, I it's like I, I'm 
pretty confident I can figure it out. I, you have to understand something. Like, I sew. Like, it's not very, I, the special one I'm wearing is almost something I sewed. I didn't take sewing lessons. I learned to sew because I bought a pattern. I bought some fabric. Um, you know, I was enjoying a fabric. I asked them, like, how, you know, I don't know how much fabric you get and all that stuff. And I got an easy to sew pattern, and basically I followed the directions. And I, once I got comfortable with the very easy stuff, then I moved to more, you know, complicated things. And so that's how I learned to sew. So, um, yeah, if I want to do something, I'll, I'll master it. That's just, that's just, that's just how I am. I'm not gonna let a little thing like a challenge stand in my way because I like a challenge. So anyway, um, she told me to get Pro Mix BX to start them off in and she told me I needed terracotta pots uh, the reason they recommend that you do terracotta pots is because you know terracotta does dry out I'm sure if you ever have terracotta pot you notice that like it kind of weeps water out the side well that apparently helps root development because I guess with the way it's drying out I, I think I don't know if the, what they're saying plant roots maybe like chase the water and so it makes forces the plant to develop a healthier root they grow towards the edges where I guess the you know the water is kind of evaporating and so you start them in the, um, like a three and a half four inch pot and then you know a little bit you can bump them up to a uh, six inch pot so I'm looking forward to it you know what this will be a new skill set for me and listen it's all about I'm all about increasing my skill sets and so and the thing is you know plants and roots are plants and roots and I'm sure that with whatever Whatever I'm learning from the Chrysanthemum Society, I'm sure that a lot of what I learn is going to be transferable to other types of plants. And so, yeah, I welcome, I, I welcome and I relish the challenge. So, um, yeah, bring it. So, I have to get my terracotta pots. I'll get those next week. And then once I get them, I'm going to message her, text her and say, hey, so-and-so, just so you know, I, I tracked down, I got the potting mix, you um, got the potting mix at the local garden center. I got all the terracotta pots, so I'm, I'm ready to go, you know, just so you know, so that she understands, like, I'm serious about this thing. I really am. So, um, yeah. So anyway, that's what's going on. So those are the four societies that I've joined. I know the Herb Society wants me to join, um, and I know there's the West Jersey Rose Society, which I would like to join. And so there's just, there's just, but you know, I can only go to so many meetings, <laughs> that sort of thing. So it is, it is a time, it is a time commitment. Um, you know, the thing about some of the, the plant societies is that they don't just grow that particular plant. You know, they're in general, they're just, they're gardeners. And so even if you have other issues, you know, you can, you know, you can ask people because gardening is gardening is gardening, you know. And so, I don't know, with this whole chrysanthemum thing, I'm really excited, um, you know, the thought of the fact that there's a, a beautiful plant that is kind of, like, we're trying to keep from extinction is kind of, like, kind of cool. So, um, I'm going to get some, I'll walk you guys through what I'm learning and how I do, and hey, maybe that'll inspire some of you guys, you know, to try it yourself, and I don't know, especially if you're local, maybe if we get enough people, we could do, like, a South Jersey society because that would be kind of fun that would be kind of fun kind of cool so anyway guys that is it for me that's what's going on with me um if you guys are part of any societies or horticultural things like um post it in the comments um and if you're not part of one i do have some resources of stuff that i sourced out that's local to southern new jersey because i think i tracked down like dahlias and there was a bunch of other things like a rhododendron society. So if you're there's a particular plant you're interested in and you'd like to learn more about it, um, you know, leave a comment and I will uh, get you what I have. So I will see you guys in the next video and uh, don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, and share. Bye guys.